AMD's next generation GPUs are going to be absolutely insane. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Jawa. Jawa's mission is to be the community for safely buying and selling PC parts at a reasonable price, offering low fees and great customer service, which I can definitely attest to as I personally bought this RTX 3070 from Jawa anonymously, and not only did it arrive quickly, but when I ran into an issue, they immediately replaced it with a flawless substitute and asked that I only send the old one back after I confirmed the new GPU worked great. And the best part is the price I got this card at was well below other listings I could find anywhere else, likely thanks in part to Jawa's much lower seller fees of 9-12% to depending on when you join. So if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts on a platform with low fees and great customer service, be sure to click the link in the description below and watch out for some of my hardware that'll likely be popping up very soon. Okay, so today I wanna to talk about AMD's next generation GPU architecture, which is actually codenamed UDNA instead of RDNA. As it looks like, well, AMD's looking to unify their RDNA and their CDNA architectures for gaming and the enterprise slash workstation into a single architecture to make it maybe more affordable as well as simpler for them to get GPUs out. Now, to be honest with you, my immediate thoughts on this are I'm a little bit worried because they have done this in the past and it led to some kind of power hungry and hot gaming GPUs that were essentially maybe should have been sold as something else than what they were, but at the end of the day, they did get the job done, they had the performance and the cost was fairly low. So perhaps at the cost of slightly higher power as might be what happens with these GPUs, they finally give you the performance and the price that you are looking for. So there's what I think about the whole UDNA thing. And let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree whether or not this is gonna be a good move. But regardless of whether whether it was gonna be RDNA or UDNA, well, AMD's been trying to get a chiplet design to work for quite some time, and it looks like UDNA might finally be when it actually happens. Now, I do wanna to quickly touch on the original leaks for UDNA, as according to Red Gaming Tech, he had heard that there's gonna be 380 or 360 compute units on these new GPUs. Now the compute units you can think of as the cores and to just put this into perspective, the 9070 XT has 64 compute units. So going from 64 to 380 or 360, regardless of the clock speeds or memory or anything else would be an insane jump. And I'm not here to tell you that that's impossible but I am here to tell you that that coming to gaming cards is very unlikely. Could they do that for their Halo UDNA card for the data center? Yeah, they certainly could. And in fact, I wouldn't even be too surprised, but for gaming, no, that price would just be way too high. The power draw would be way too high and I don't see them doing that. So what can we expect out of AMD's next generation UDNA cards when it comes to their gaming side? What I think we're gonna be seeing here based on everything that I'm seeing going on right now and hearing, is you're gonna see something a lot smaller than that on the desktop. And to be clear, that doesn't mean it's not gonna be powerful. In fact, these cards are going to be insanely powerful, assuming they hit these specs, which we'll find out as more and more leaks come out. But if they do hit these specs, which we're gonna take a look at in just a second, they would not only be a massive leap over the 9070 XT in terms of performance, but the top end GPU would even be faster than the RTX 5090. And that's gonna be a pretty insane jump in performance. So let's take a look. Let's start off with the 1080 XT, and this one I do believe would be based off of a multi-chip module design. Now, could they do this without doing that? Yes, they could. They could hit these numbers with a single monolithic design, so keep that in mind. But assuming it is a multi-chip module design, which seems likely, well then we're probably gonna be taking a look at a cut down version of the full GPU die, which will likely have around 104 compute units. Now, it's a massive increase over the 64, but it's not the 380 that was previously leaked. Again, I think that's for the data center. Now, this will also likely run at the same rough three gigahertz you're seeing on the 9070 XT as although it should be moving to three slash four nanometer instead of just four nanometer on the 9070 XT, which would allow for 10 to 15% higher clock speeds, they're gonna have to save some power to actually fit this many compute units into a single GPU or multiple GPU dies without massively blowing up the power budget. Now, with that being the case, you'll likely be looking at a card that has 20 gigabytes of G7 memory running at 32 gigabits per second on a 320 bit bus for 1,280 gigabytes per second or exactly double the memory bandwidth of the 9070 XT. Also, this should come in at roughly 450 
150 watts. And in terms of performance, it would be around 80 teraflops versus the 49 on the 9070 XT. So teraflops is kind of theoretical performance. So the final performance we'll take a look at in just a second. But next up, we have the 1090 XT. This would be the full GPU die, which should house around 144 compute units, again, running at three gigahertz with this time 24 gigabytes of G7 running at 32 gigabits per second on a 384 bit bus for 1,536 gigabytes per second, any power budget of roughly 550 watts. And in terms of performance, 111 teraflops. And now you might be wondering why wouldn't they go for a 512 bit bus like Nvidia? And they certainly could if they made a giant 360 compute unit die, I expect they would have a 512 bit bus and that would be absolutely insane, but there's just no reason to do that on these cards. And let's take a look at why. So if we take a look at the actual performance of these cards in the release date, you'll see why going any larger is just totally unnecessary. I mean, start off with the 1080 XT. This would likely come in around $899, although of course we are way too far out to actually lock in final prices on cards that have yet to been released, but this is what I would estimate it would come in at. And on paper, it would be 63% faster than the 9070 XT. And in real performance for 4K gaming, you could probably expect close to 50% higher performance and a release date in quarter one of 2027. Now I have heard some rumors that allegedly you might be seeing UDNA by the end of 2026, but to be honest with you guys, I think that's just gonna be too early for these cards. I don't think they'll hit those targets. I think it's gonna slip into quarter one of 2027, though I'd like to be surprised. Who knows, maybe those rumors are correct and it could happen by the end of 2026. I'd love to see it, I just don't think it'll happen. And when you take a look at the performance again on the 1080 XT, well, 50% more performance than the 9070 XT would actually put it at being significantly faster than the RTX 5080. That thing's around 20% faster than the 9070 XT, so this would be actually a substantial jump over the RTX 5080 and coming in at $100 lower. And you're actually gonna be getting 20 gigabytes of VRAM rather than 16. So in every single way, the 1080 XT would just be a straight upgrade over the RTX 5080. Also, I do suspect you'll be seeing multi-frame generation as well as far better ray tracing performance out of the 10 series in the UDNA architecture coming out from AMD. Although I do suspect you'll hear a lot more on that, honestly, probably from Red Gaming Tech himself in the not too distant future. But now let's talk about the 1090 XT, the potentially highest end GPU. And with 144 compute units, well, this thing, I do suspect there'll be trying to target around $1,200 and getting around 2.27 times more performance than the 9070 XT. That is insane increase in theoretical performance, but assuming they go with a multi-chip module design, the scaling probably won't be perfect. And with that being the case, you'll likely only see around a 2X increase in actual gaming performance, which would still actually put it ahead of the RTX 5090. Talking about 2X versus the 1.82X, on the 5090 versus the 9070 XT. So you could expect somewhere between 10 to 20% more performance in the RTX 5090 out of the RX 1090 XT. And this GPU, again, keep in mind, could come in potentially as much as $800 lower than the RTX 5090, as AMD has never gone for insanely high prices before, and they're gonna have to significantly undercut Nvidia if they want this thing to fly off the shelves. Although, say a $1,500 price point isn't necessarily out of the question. I just don't think they would actually do it if they're trying to finally actually improve their market share and brand reputation in the Radeon division, because sitting at 8% market share, well, that's not a great look for Radeon, and at some point, they're gonna have to address that. And I think that's what the UDNA architecture is gonna be. And this one likewise will be coming in likely around quarter one of 2027 with a possibility of the end of next year or quarter four of 2026. But when you compare these GPUs to their NVIDIA counterparts and even AMD's current GPUs, not only are they gonna be offering a significant performance increase, but they're also gonna be coming in at, I believe, pretty good price points. Although we'll have to wait and see if AMD ends up stuffing that up when we actually get closer and closer to the launch. Now, do keep in mind that this is based on some leaked information originally that came out from Red Gaming Tech when he leaked the 360 and 380 compute unit versions. I'd love to check in with him to see if any of those leaked specs have changed since then, but based on all the architectural information, this is where it should be landing 
in the actual gaming variants. And I think they're gonna be very, very good. 20 gigabyte and 24 gigabyte versions, I think would go over very well with gamers and at a decent price point, would bring some serious heat to NVIDIA in the high end of their GPU division. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think the AMD can finally challenge the RTX 5090? And even if they do, is it gonna be too late? Will the RTX 60 series be right around the corner, ready to dethrone AMD once again? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.